poster here. This is a mother barn owl. She's actually sitting and incubating eggs right there. They will lay their eggs at three day intervals so that uh, there's a, a difference between the ages of those young. When the uh, first to hatch out uh, hatches, that's gonna be the first to get food when it comes back to the nest. So if there's a lot of young and there's not enough food to go around, those youngest may actually die and be fed upon by their older brothers or sisters. And a lot of times what I do is with this program, I use it as a youth outreach program. And I talk to the youth a lot of times and I'll ask, how many in here are the youngest of the family? Oh. And, and then it registers to them that they're happy they're not a barn owl, you know? But uh, barn owls, the, the mother, she will stay with the young. Uh, she'll, she'll brood those young. Uh, they, they will lay up to four to seven eggs, usually in this area. They're very prolific for a raptor. Probably they're the most widely dis distributed uh, raptor in the world, occupying all the continents except for Antarctica. And here you can see, there, here's a clutch of eggs uh, in one of our boxes, actually seven eggs. You know, if you look at hawks and eagles, they might have two at the most, and maybe they might fledge just one of those. And barn owls, if there's enough prey, they will actually fledge all of those uh, youngsters, and there's a lot of prey in our area. They actually mm. lay their eggs on the remains of their prey. The, mm. the bones and fur are regurgitated in the form of what we call a pellet. And how, how many of you have actually uh, taken a part of barn owl pellet? Anybody? Oh, no, we've got you. a few experienced people. <laughs> so you know what I'm talking about. This is this is part of a, a barn owl pellet that they have uh, regurgitated. And if you pull this pellet apart, you can actually find the bones. Here's a tibia and fibula right there. And uh, one of the things, as I mentioned, I use this as an outreach program with kids. With kids, cute is good. They love the cuteness of the barn owls, but gross is better. <laughs> as gruesome and as gross as you can make something, I mean, the more they're into it. And you give them a bone chart like this, and these kids, they can, they can actually... You can have second and third graders talking about scapulas and thoracic vertebrae, <laughs> uh, just incredible mandibles. And all of these bones are in our own bodies because we're also mammals. And these are actually some of the skeletons that the kids have actually recreated themselves. They put these together for me. I had them do it as a class and they learn all about anatomy. Uh, they also learn about predator-prey relationships. One of the things, this, this program is incredible for its outreach potential because we also have the kids build the boxes for the owls. All the boxes that I put up in the glades are built by kids. They're not perfect by any means, but uh, they build them and they actually get to see them put to use and, and uh, actually occupied by the uh, barn owls. Barn owls have uh, tremendous appetites. Uh, uh, a uh, growing barn owl of about, what we're going to see some in that box right now, we've got some young chicks in there, uh, they, they can actually swallow entire rats whole. And I've got video of this in some of our owl cams that we've had, and the kids all say, play it again, play it again. And, but it's incredible to watch these chicks, and they'll, they might, uh, a, a chick of this size can actually eat four to five rats per night. Wow per night, okay? So if you have a clutch of a six or seven owlets in that in that box, those parents might have to bring back up to two dozen prey pieces per night. And we're not talking little mice here, we're talking rats in our area. Uh, in terms of uh, reducing rodenticides, uh, this pr pr program's been tremendous. Uh, one of the growers, he used to have about 4,000 acres of sugar cane, and uh, he told me that he started using barn owl boxes instead of rodenticides. He used to use eight to 10 tons of rodenticides a year. So that was eight to 10 tons of rat poisons that weren't going out there anymore. And he said he had less rodent damage with the barn owls than he ever did when he was using rodenticides. So it's had a tremendous impact in that regard. Um, I do have some pellets here. If you want to take uh, one of these home for a youngster or you want to dissect it yourself, you're welcome to. These are sterilized. I, I'm a plant pathologist. I have an autoclave. I can, I can actually <laughs> sterilize these things. So they're very safe to handle. Believe it or not, you could probably make, if you put up a, a barn out box on your farms, you can make money. These pellets are worth some money. These the scientific suppliers, they sell these for up to four dollars a piece for a premium pellet and so you could actually sell these and make money i i know one supplier they told me there was a student he put himself through cornell cornell i mean this is the ivy league school collecting owl pellets and uh so 
Uh, I, I've got these. You can you know, take one of these if you'd like. Um, and uh, I was one time giving a talk at a senior citizen center over in Sarasota, and I was it was right before Christmas, and I was telling the people about the owl pellets, and I said they're great for kids. Maybe your grandkids might want some of these. And I said they make tremendous stocking stuffers, you know. <laughs> and uh, I'm always imagining a kid waking up on Christmas morning, finding a barn owl pellet in his stocking. But, <laughs> Um, the uh, barn owls are, are very good providers. They, they typically are thought to mate for life. Although I had a graduate student, we had telemetry on some of our owls, and he told me, he says, Dr. Reed, he says, this one male, he's going to visit two different nests. <laughs> so there's a little hanky-panky going on. But uh, when, the, when the, small, the barn owls are really uh, small, the mother will tear the prey apart, and she'll give them little furless pieces of meat. And uh, that's when they're still uh, don't even have their eyes open, and very tender with the uh, with the owlets. And then as those uh, owls uh, get a little larger, um, I'll tell you they're just ravenous. They want food all the time. So then the mother and father, they, the uh, male, they don't even roost in the box anymore. They roost somewhere else, and that's what's happened in this box. Uh, I have uh, three youngsters in this box. Uh, the mother and father, they were roosting somewhere else right now. And uh, so I, I was able to take the box down and you'll be able to see these barn owl chicks uh, as they are in the box. It is a little smelly, okay? <laughs> uh, as I mentioned, they, they nest on the remains of their prey. So you can actually see all the bones and fur from the prey that they've uh, uh, developed. This box has only been up through two nesting cycles right now. And so it's not completely filled up yet. But boy, some of these boxes, it's incredible. They're like rodent graveyards inside. Just thousands and thousands of rodent bones inside. And uh, uh, so uh, I'm gonna take the box uh, top off. You might hear a little bit of hissing. They're, they've already been disturbed, so they may not, but they will hiss uh, as a uh, uh, defense sometimes. And you can actually see the, uh, the young barn owls in the box. Yeah. yeah. There you can hear some of that hissing. And they smell. <laughs> what is that? Hi. Florida. One in the fall and one in the spring. And so I always have. I, I, have I don't know that I call them cute, but I don't know that I would call them little either. And nor would I call them clean. That's it.